thank you guys again for being here at on another Saturday night on another POC Nation night. Ooh, Lord Jesus, I want to thank God for another Saturday night. Yes, indeed, we are. Look like we've been having rain after rain and storms after storm. Man, we ought to make sure that we are praying for uh, Louisiana because they are constantly going through it. Amen. They are going through it, and this is what. You know, I was watching the news today, and as I can see, they they are really going through it. They, and I think that whole their whole side of their whole east side is really going through it. Um, thank you guys again. Let me turn this down. Woo! Thank you guys again for tuning in to another PLC Nation. Now, do me a favor. Make sure that you are like always hitting that like button, hitting hitting the subscribe button, hitting that that share button. Please do so. Make sure that you're hitting the like button and also hitting that um, hitting that share button. We want to make sure that we are getting this word out. We want to make sure that we're getting the word out, getting the ministry out and things like that. So make sure that you are hitting that like button, hitting hitting the subscribe button and all of that. And so uh, like always, I want to thank, thank you guys again for tuning in with us on another POC Nation night. And so we are, we are live at 7. Tell someone, and then make sure you go tell someone, tell your friends, hit that mark, hit that button, make sure you tell your people that we are we are up. So, hey, I am super excited. I am super excited. Let me tell you why I'm so excited. I'm excited because God showed me this word on the way to California last week, and, and, and look, I had Katie Bell come up, and she taught for us last week, and she, she did an excellent job. Do me a favor. She did an excellent job. Hit that like button because I know y'all on here. So hit that like button. She did an excellent job. She did a, a, a excellent job last week, and she covered for me and me. And I'm trying to train her into going into ministry and things like that. I'm trying to get her trained to go into ministry. So, and she did an excellent job covering for me. Uh, and soon I'm gonna have my wife up. I'm gonna have my wife come in. And what I'm trying to do is show the impact of of the pressing on church. I want you guys to see. See, I don't, I'm not hiding anything. What you see is what you're going to get from me and my wife. What you see is what you're going to get. And are we a perfect family? No, we're not perfect family. We are, we are, uh, we are a striving family that's going, that's op trying to operate in what God is telling us to do. And so what, you, so what you may see me do is have those come up that's close to me because I want you, I want you to see that what God is doing. And most of the time, most preachers probably hide their family. But what I want you just to see what God is doing and see how we are working and things like that. And so God gave me this word on the way to California last week. And man, when I say this word hit me on the way there, I realized something that what God is doing in this season, it made me think. It made me think. It made me think. And I started to see this. And, I, and as I was looking at it, it made me look at, I started looking at things a little different. And as we was flying, and I started hearing God tell me, uh, you have to find yourself in this season, in the midst of this coronavirus, in the midst of what, what's going on right now, that we have to find ourselves in this season, looking at situation where he's, where he's saying, basically, I got you covered. In spite of what's going on, in spite of what's, what's happening, in spite of what the president is saying, in spite of what, what those around us are I, I, uh, what's the names are saying? Our government is saying, in spite of what your friends may say, may be saying, God is saying in this season, I have you covered. I have you covered in this season. I got you covered. And so he hit me with this word. He hit me with this word, and and he sent me to Psalms 23. Simple, a very, I, I, uh, 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 this, a very, a um. This this chapter right here, Psalm 23, we all know this. We know this. If you've been in church long enough, and even if you haven't been in church, you know it. It's a very, very, very simple, very, very simple uh, scripture, very simple scripture, very simple word, Psalm 23. And the Bible says this in the book of Psalms, and this is what he tells me he, when he sent me, to, sent me to this chapter. He says this. Listen to me, Ronnie. He says, Ronnie, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. In the midst of this pandemic, he says, Ronnie, listen to me. He says, guess what? You have to understand something. Just like David has to go went through something, just like David was going through something when he wrote this, just like it may seem like you may be going through a pandemic, and it may seem like everything around you is, is breaking out in hell. It may seem like everything around you is it make you feel like you just want to give up. He said, just remember this. The Lord is my shepherd. 
He says this, the Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. I'm reading out the, this is the NIV version. He says, the Lord is my shepherd and I, and I lack nothing. Then he goes on to verse 2. He said, he makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside the quiet water. I like that. He said, he leads me beside the quiet water. He refreshes my soul. Woo, my God. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his namesake. Now, he says, for his namesake. Then he goes on. He says, even though, even though I walk through the darkest valley, even though I walk through the darkest valley, the King James said, even though I walk through the valley of shadow, shadow of death, but the NIV said, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. Uh-oh, here we go. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That rod and staff comfort me. Watch this. We're going to break this down. He said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup, oh, my God, my cup. Get that. Y'all got to underline this. Highlight that part right there. Highlight it, underline it, highlight it, do whatever you got to do. It says, my cup, my cup, my cup, my cup overflows. Then verse 6, close it out with this. He says, surely, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, my God, surely, <laughs> surely your goodness and and love will follow me, and I will I will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And tonight, beloved, I want to speak on, I want to speak on, and this is the new series. This is what God gave me. I want to speak on living in the overflow. That's why I tell you, that's why I tell you to highlight overflow, highlight overflow, living in the overflow, living in the the overflow, living in the overflow. Here's what you, I want you to understand, living in the overflow, living in the overflow. I, the new series, the new series, in spite of what's going on in this pandemic, in spite of how it may look, God said, I got you, I'm covering you. But here's the problem. I know for sure, sometimes, sometimes, have you ever felt like, have you ever felt in this moment, and this is me talking. This is me talking. Have you ever felt like felt like the moment every time you go to fill up, every time you go to fill up, all of a sudden you back on E. All of a sudden in situation, every time you walk in, every time you go and fill up your car, every time you go and fill up your spirit, every time you go and fill up whatever it may take, even living in this pandemic, it almost seemed like it's putting you back on E. It almost seemed like it's starting to, it drained you. It almost seemed like you're back on E. you back at the place where, I, you back at the place where it shows the big E. you back at the big E. And here's the thing with the big E. The big E is staring at you. You do everything you have to do to fill up. The moment you fill up and all of a sudden it's feel like you just ran out. You're empty. It feel like you're the drain. You drain. You at this place now where it feel like you now drain, and it feel like everything about you is back on empty. You have no energy. You have no. You can't keep up. It's moving around. Everything is moving. Everything is going crazy. The enemy is now trying to hit you with everything he possibly can because now you back on the E. Uh, you here's the thing. You see the light has came on in your life. You see that the light has came on in your life and you try your best to get as much out of it as possible. Have you ever been in a position and maybe just, maybe that just me that I see the light come on and now I'm trying my best to find myself in a place where I'm trying to get as much out of it as much as I can out of this situation before I can make it to the next stop, before I can make it to the next thing in my life. I'm trying to get as much out of it. Many of us in, are in this pandemic and we're living in this life. We're, we're going, we're waking up day to day and we're praying and we're asking God, just get me to the next day. And we're trying to get as much as we possibly can out of the situation. Maybe that's just 
me. Oh, my God. Maybe that's just me. Come on, Ronnie Bell. You got to teach on tonight. Maybe that's just me. You trying to do all you can to get as much as you possibly can out the situation because now you see that the light has came on. You riding on E. You riding on E. Here's the thing. A lot of us are riding on empty. We are, we are riding on empty. A lot of us are in this situation or operating in a situation where now it seems like we've been riding on E. You riding, you riding on E. You have been riding on empty for a long time. A lot of us been riding on empty for a long time. My God, we've been riding on empty for a long time. We, it just seemed like, and the, the, the sad part about it, you know it's empty and you try to ignore it because you've been riding on empty for a long time. We know, we see that it's empty and a lot of us begin to, well, we keep riding because we're trying to ignore the situation. We're trying to ignore what's going on. We're trying to ignore the, the headache, the heartache, the pain that go, that's going on, that's draining us. And we keep riding on empty. We keep riding on the situation thinking that, oh, it got to get better. It, it got to, it got, we got to find a way. I got to find a way. And the sad part about it, a lot of us are riding on empty and you keep trying to ignore it. We look away and we hope that it go away. Lord, can it just go away? Maybe that's just me. Maybe they're just me or walking or, or living this, living through the pandemic. Maybe they're just me or waking up every day and I'm trying to figure out what is, what's going on. I know some people are probably waking up every day right now in this situation and you trying to figure out when, when will I get to, I'm getting, when can I get my next paycheck? When can I get survive the next thing? When can I sub get the next, the, the pay my, how can I pay my bill? And you trying to figure out if you could do it and you just been in and you trying to ignore it, that I don't I know I know the situation is going to be bad I see the situation is bad and now I now I have to deal with it I'm riding on empty you you look away you look away and you riding on empty oh my god you've been trying you trying to figure this out and you riding on empty you become here's the thing here's the thing after looking away here's the problem with a lot of us we become comfortable we become comfortable in it and we settle for what's being poured out. Here's the problem with a lot of us because we've been riding on empty and we've been riding on empty so long that we become so comfortable riding on empty. The moment we the moment the moment we finally get to a place where we can at least try to fill up, we settle for what's being poured out. We settle for anything. This is a season where you can't settle. You can't settle in this pandemic. I stop by to encourage you on tonight. Don't you settle in the midst of this pandemic because this is not the season where you got to settle for just anything. We get comfortable and we settle. We get comfortable and we settle for what's being poured out. See, I like my car. I love my car well enough to know that certain gas I can't just put in my car. Certain gas I just can't put in my car. I can't put a whole lot into my car. Certain gas I just can't put into my car. I realize, I realize in this situation that no matter how it may look, every I can't just put just anything into my car. Oh, my God. Listen to me. Watch this. Watch this. Listen to me. I just can't put just any type of gas in my car. And that has been the biggest problem. That has been the problem. Let me let me turn me up just a little bit. If my volume low, hit me, hit me, hit me, give me some hearts because if you think my volume low, I, I want to make sure that you can hear me. Certain type of gas, I just can't put anything into my car. Oh my God. I just can't put anything into the car. Listen to me. The, you have to understand is this. I, I realize I can't settle for what's being poured out. I can't settle for just cheap gas into my car because I realize that in this situation that certain type of gas will mess my car up. And if I settle for just anything, oh my God, if I just settle for anything, it's going to mess up something in my, it's going to mess up some, something in my system, something in my, in my car. It's going to mess up something. Listen to me. Watch this. Watch this. People will pour you, people will pour you anything because they know that you are thirsty. 
That's the problem. A lot of us start to pour just anything because we know that we are thirsty for something. We know that we are trying to find something. Whatever we thirsty, we start, we'll start accepting anything. And the reason why most people are pouring just anything to you because they know that you are thirsty. They know that you are thirst for anything. They know that in this situation, you start to take anything. You start to pour, you'll, t you'll take anything at this particular moment. Here's the problem with a lot of us. We become so thirsty. We become so thirsty. We start trapping for the attention. Mm. Ronnie Bell, you got to speak on tonight. You got to understand something. We become so thirsty that we start trapping for attention. We start thirst trapping just for attention. We start thirst trapping for the thing that's going to drain us. That's why, that's why, that's why sometimes, sometimes, Having to be in certain situations, listen to me. That's why sometimes when people when, when when people pour out something to you, you just accept it. You know for sure that that man is not for you, but you accept the booty call. Oh, oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, Ronnie Bell, you going there? Don't don't go there. You accept that you accept the situation. You know that that man is not for you, but you just accept it. You know for sure that in this situation, when things are not looking right. And you know for sure that she is not your wife. But instead, instead, instead of saying, well, I'm not going to go that route. We basically settle for anything. You settle for them just paying you anything. That's why it, that's why it seems like every time you're looking for, you're maybe looking for a job. And you know for sure that you're worth more than that. You know for sure that your salt is worth more than that. But you just settle. You settle for anything my god come on ronnie bell you settle for anything and here's what you have to understand people will pour you anything because they know that you are thirsty for they'll know that you know that you are thirsty and they know that you'll start thirst trapping for just anything they know that you start you'll find yourself in a situation where you start thirst trapping just for anything oh my god you start thirst trapping just for anything you make your mind up that you are thirst for just anything you start thirsting for just anything and that's what you have to understand in this situation listen to me i declare tonight that we're gonna end the thirst trap i declare tonight that we're gonna cancel out the, the, the big e because this is the situation where you have to understand that when god is saying in this season he says no matter how it may look I got you, and you don't have to be empty no more. Watch this. Watch this. Listen to me. Overflow, overflow simply means this. Overflow simply means this. Watch this. Overflow means this, to cover or to flow over the brim. Overflow means to cover or to flow over the brim. In other words, no matter how it may look, if you pour something into an empty glass, if you pour water into an empty glass, eventually the water is going to uprise and it's going to flow over the brim. It's going to it's going to uprise and it's going to overflow over the brim. When you live in the overflow, whatever flows over the brim has to cover you, has to cover whatever is flowing over. Is going to have to cover and it's going to have to cover you in certain situations. And God has said in this season, when I fill you up in this season, it got to cover you. When I pour into you in this season, in the midst of a pandemic, it's going to, I'm going to cover you in the midst of your situation. In spite of what's going on, in spite of how the pandemic may look, in spite of how it may seem, I cover you. And God is saying in this season, you got to know in your mind that when I, when I come, when I fill you up, it's an overflow in your life. It's going to be an overflow in your situation. It's going to be an overflow in this situation. In spite of what they say on the news about the pandemic, in spite of how it may look, about the corona, in spite of how, uh, how it may seem that you may have lost your job, God said, in spite of how it may look, you still covered. 
you still covered in the situation. And my God, I thank God for covering me in this situation. I thank God for keeping me in the midst of the in the midst of the corona. I thank God for covering me in this situation. Somebody needs to say cover. I think if you if you write that, I just need you to do me a favor. Type it in covered. Type it in covered because no matter how it may look, I thank God for covering me in this situation. Oh my God, watch this here. That's why you have to be careful when you hear people say, I got you or I'm going to cover you. Be, that you have to be careful when you hear people say, be, when you hear people say, I got you or I'm going to cover you. Because what you don't realize, they may not have enough flow to cover you. And the reason why you mad and frustrated, the me reason why you think, the reason why you have became so disappointed, you became disappointed in the church, you became disappointed with those that you're around. The reason why you feel disappointed, because they, they don't have enough flow to cover you. They flow ran out. They became so empty. They be got into a place where they, they now empty and they can't cover you. That's why you can't depend on folks saying that I cover you when you need to make your mind up and depend on God saying, I got you. I'm going to cover you in this season. In this season. You can't depend on people saying, I'm going to cover you in this season. You can't depend on people saying that this is the season where I just need, I'm gonna, I cover you in the midst of this situation. Because no matter how it may look, some people, they, they're depending on the same flow that you running, that you trying to get to. And whenever God is saying, hey, when you start depending on those and not on God, you, 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 you will start to, your overflow starts to run out. And God is saying in this season, I got you covered. And I'm going to cover you to the brim. But you got to make sure in your mind that you got to know in this season. Oh, my God. Come through, Ronnie Bell. That you can't get disappointed because those around you didn't, didn't, didn't make, didn't put you in a position where it overflowed. Because God is saying, I'm, a, oh, I'm giving you the position where you overflowing. Listen to me. Listen to me. Living in the overflow. Living in the overflow. Understand something. When you're going to live in the overflow, when you're living in the overflow, in the overflow, you have to ask yourself what's what is guiding you and who you are following. What's guiding you and who you following? Live, if you're going to live in the overflow, understand something. You're going to have to know and you're going to have to know in your mindset what is guiding you and what's following you. What's guiding you and what's following you? What's fo what, what are you following? If you go, if you are being guided, there should be no lack. Mm. Listen up. If you're being guided in this season, if you're being guided, there should be no lack. You lack because you lack because you are following something that is empty and it can't fill you up. Oh my God, Ronnie Bell, come through. Listen to me. You're lacking because you're following something that is empty and it can't fill you up. You're trying to follow a situation. You're trying to follow a job. You're trying to follow a man. You're trying to follow a car. You're trying to follow something. And every, and in the miss you get the minute the minute you start to run to it, you get you'll start lacking because now the situation does not fill you up. The thing that you're you're you're, you're seeking does not fill you up. When the Bible said that the Lord should be my shepherd and I shall not lack, you're following something that's going to cause you to lack in this season. And you are wondering why in the midst of a pandemic, you're trying to you're trying to figure out why you frustrated. And you have to understand that you're frustrated because whatever is guiding you, not CNN, not Donald Trump, not 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 Biden, not not your, whatever is guiding you in this season, you got to know that it you should not have any lack behind it. Because you made your mind up that in this season, whatever I'm guided by, it should, it should always put me in a place of overflow. Here's the thing. A tour guide, a tour guide takes you to a place that you, takes you to a place you need to be. Mm. A tour guide would take you to a place that you need to be. 
And the moment you get there, the moment you get there, wherever the tour guide has taken you to, there should be no lack in the midst of this situation. The problem with a lot of us, we jump on behind people or we jump in behind those or we run behind those that the moment we get there, we find ourselves in a lack. We find ourselves in a place where now we're trying to figure out why I'm missing, what, I'm mi what am I missing or what, why am I missing something when in reality you're missing something because now you're missing something because there was lack in tenth of it. There was lack that has taken place in it. There was you was lacking something. And the reason why you're not overflowing, the reason why you're not overflowing in joy or happiness, because you've been lacking something out of somebody that couldn't give it to you. You started lacking something out of a car that you thought that if I guess get a new car, it's going to make me happy. If I get a new job, it's going to make me happy. But you have to understand in this season, the thing that you are got, the thing that's guiding you, should the thing that's guiding you or the thing that you're following shouldn't put you in lack and you got to know and your you got to check your check what you following in this season if you're going to live in overflow my god do me a favor somebody type in check what you following check check what you follow whatever is guiding you in this season should put you should put you in lack it should put you in a place where you're lacking in this season listen up it should never put you in a place where now you find yourself in lack in this season. You have to understand something. Watch this. Watch this. Listen to me. Living in living in overflow is going to require some obedience. Oh, this is a cuss word right here. This right here is a cuss word. Living in overflow requires obedience. Oh, my God. Obedience. Obedience. Understand something. Obedience has to be has to be a sacrifice of overflow. O obedience has to be sacrificed in over in the overflow. Obedience come through Ronnie Bell. You got to teach on tonight. Obedience has to be sacrificed in overflow. And the problem with a lot of us, we refuse to be obedient to something, or we refuse to be obedient. And the really reason, the reason why we're not in the overflow because we're not obedient. Obedience, listen to me. Obedience will make you lie down by the thing that you need to fill you in peace. Oh my God, come through. Obedience will make you lie down. To the thing that you need to fill you in peace. The problem with a lot of us, you trying to be obedient to the thing that you know that's, unmake, that's not making you happy. You're obedient to the thing that's, that's keeping you in lack. You're obedient to the, to the person that you thought that had your back. You're trying to be loyal to something that knowing that it's not worth, it's not bringing, it's not going to bring you any joy. It's not taking you to the next level. You're trying to be loyal to something knowing that it's not putting you in your next level. But the problem with a lot of us, the reason why you haven't finished this thing yet, because you haven't been obedient to it. This is the season of the pandemic. This is the season that you got to know in your mind, I got to be obedient. Oh, come on. Come on, Ronnie Bell. You got to know that you need to be obedient to the situation because whatever obedience steps in, obedience will make you lie down by the thing that you need to, to bring you peace. Whatever you trying to find peace in, you got to know in this season that start, start being obedient to it and you'll start finding peace in it. You want peace in your marriage? My God, if you want some peace in your marriage, I dare you to just be obedient in your, in your marriage because obedience will re obedience requires sacrifice. Obedience requires you giving up something. Obedience requires you finding yourself in a place where now, Oh my God, this is obedient. You got to be obedient. The reason why everything is so chaotic, we want, we, we want sacrifice to lie down when God say no. The reason why everything is so chaotic in our life, we won't sacrifice. We won't, we won't be obedient to, we won't be obedient to the thing when God say no. When God tell us no, we start, oh, 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 no, 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 no. We, we start having an argument. 
We'll have an argument with something, knowing that God is saying, no, not this season. No, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't do it that way. We start having, a, we will have an argument with something, and God is saying that God is simply telling you no in this season, and he's, or he's telling you to move in this season, and you won't be obedient to it. And this is why you have to understand, now he has to make you do it. The moment God said, well, Ronnie, you have to start that church in this season, and I can argue all day long, and God said, well, no, nope, that's not what I told you. But in this season, you got to know that you got to be obedient. In this season, because either way it go, God going to make you do it when you don't want to do it. God going to make you do it when you think that you're not supposed to do it. But you got to be obedient, baby. You got to be obedient in the situation. Listen to me. You got to find yourself in the situation being obedient. My God, hold on one second. This noise working my nerves. You got to be obedient in this situation. Listen to me. You got to know in your mind that you're going to have to be obedient. Watch this. Watch it. Being obedient. You have to be obedient in the midst of the, of the overflow. You got to find yourself being obedient in the midst of the overflow. If you're going to understand this, here, the reason why everything is chaotic, everything is so chaotic because you're not being obedient. You have to figure out why, why you, you have to figure out why you, why everything is off, off, is going crazy. You got to check and find out, are you obedient in the situation? Are you obedient in the situation? Listen to me. You got to know in your mind that this is a season of overflow, but God is saying this. I need you to operate in obedience so you can get to the next level. If you're going to live in overflow, 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 this is the thing. Living in overflow refreshes, 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 refreshes. Over, living in overflow refreshes you. Living in overflow will put you in a place now your mindset is renewed. When you living in overflow, overflow, living in overflow refreshes you. It, it the overflow is is it, oh, when you living in overflow, it refreshes your soul. It changes how you feel about you. It changes how you feel about you, and you see yourself different. You'll start finding yourself in situation where now you start making better decisions because now you're not the easy to distract it. Because you, you're not easy to distract it. You, you, you have to understand when you're living in the overflow, overflow refreshes you. It refreshes your soul. It refreshes you. You now have a new mindset. You now see yourself different when you're living in the overflow. Oh, my God. I just like, see, I love, love going to Starbucks. And every now and then, Starbucks got this drink. It's like a, a, a passion fruit drink. That's what they call a dragon passion fruit drink. And sometimes when I get the drink it, and I drink it, I'll be like, whoa. It, it gives me some type of refreshing. It refreshes me. It, it gives me something where I'm now I feel it, it brings like an ease to me. And sometimes we're mad and frustrated because you have to understand when you're living in the overflow, overflow supposed to refreshes your soul. That's why when you under the cover, when you covered in God, it refreshes your soul. You don't be, you're not so easily mad at people. The reason why most people are so mad and mean because you're not, you have to understand, you have to check. Are you really covered under the, over, are you really covered by God? The moment you start finding yourself being covered, it's a refreshing. See, this is what I like about it. This is what I like about it. Not only you'll find yourself in a, di in a in, you'll find yourself going in a different direction because it refreshes you. You'll start finding yourself being guided along the right path. The Bible said it, he guides me along the right path because you make different. Your decisions become different. You start making wise, discerned decisions. You 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 have a better discernment of what's going on in life. You'll have a better discernment of how you feel about certain things because it refreshes your soul. Your, your mindset now becomes clear. You now becomes clear, and now you can see things different. The Bible said he started to attach his name to you, and whenever he attaches his name to you, there's a benefit that comes along with that name. Oh, my God. See, whenever you have that, whenever you, your, his name is attached to you, all you have to do is just walk in the room. He guides you in the right path. My God, Ronnie Bell, you got to teach on tonight. 
living in the overflow. And when I'm when you start to live in the overflow, everything about you becomes favor. Oh my God. Everything about you becomes favor. God attacks his name to you, and all you have to do is just now walk into the room, and you now walk in favor. You see yourself different, and this is the season of even though you may be walking, even though the pandemic is, is in place, that that's not going to stop what God is doing in your life. Even though the pandemic is in 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 is everybody saying that you are now losing jobs, you are now in in situations where it feel like now you should just give up. That's not going to stop what God is doing when he attaches his name to you. Now you're operating in favor. That's called favor, baby. And when you're operating in a place of overflow, when you're living in overflow, you're, it refreshes how you see yourself. You It refreshes your soul. And not only refreshing your soul, he changes how you feel about yourself. And the moment you change how you, man, moment he changes how you see yourself, you start to walk in a different path. And the minute you walk in a different path, now you can now now you can know when you walk into the room, your his name is associated to you. Listen to me, living in the overflow, it re, it's gonna. I want you to understand something because now we we are in this pandemic. I can tell you in this situation that it no matter how it may look, God got you in the situation. God is covering you in the situation. But when you're living in the overflow. And living in the overflow, you still have to understand that you're still going to be required to go through a valley experience. When you're living in the over in, in the overflow, you still are required to grow through something, to go through something. You don't have to fear because his because because the faith that you have, listen to me. You don't have to fear because the faith that the this faith and the word of God, the faith that you have and the word of God becomes your rod and staff. Listen to me. You don't have to fear when you're going through a valley experience. You don't have to fear when you're going through something because when you got faith and you got the word of God on your side, when you got faith and you got the word of God, now that becomes your rod and staff. Talk about that, Ronnie Bell. See, here's the problem. A lot of us don't understand that whenever you operate in the word and whenever you got the word and whenever you obtain faith, it becomes now like a rod and a staff. See, it, a rod or a staff is like a stick and it guides you through. It, 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 allow, it, it gives you something that you can become to protect yourself. It allows you to be able to move, maneuver through things. It'll, it'll hold you up when you think that you can't make it up the hill. It'll put you in a place where, where you think, where it, where if you're thinking that the enemy is coming in. Listen to me. <coughs> faith, faith comes by hearing of the word. Faith comes by hearing of the word. Understand something. God's word is like a staff. God's word is like a staff or a rod. When you when when it's when it's in your hand, you have something to swing at your enemy. That's why you have to understand something that faith and the word of God. And if the word comes by hearing, if faith comes by hearing of the word of God, it becomes like a, the rod and staff. I was sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I see my wife and I, I laugh at her. Because sometimes she'll grab a stick when she's going walking. She'll have this stick, and as she, she'll take a broom handle, a broom handle, or one of the broom handles out of my garage, and she take it and she starts to walk with it. And in the sense of it, I'm kind of looking at her like, why you got that broom handle? Don't put my broom handle back. And she's looking at me, so I need this broom handle. And as I begin to look at her and start laughing, like, put my broom handle back, I notice that she started taking the broom handle. And sometimes, sometimes when I when I when I see her taking a broom handle, it frustrates me. But one day I seen a dog out, and as I seen this dog started to move around, he started moving back and forth. That same stick that I went and got, that same stick that she went and got, I went and ran and got the stick, and I started to take the stick. And I started swinging it at the dog. And sometimes you have to understand, you got to know that the that your faith and the word of God has to become like a stick. Or become like a rod and a staff where you now have the option to protect, where you now can protect yourself from whatever the enemy is trying to do in this season. You got to know in your mindset, it should be a comfort. 
You now, now it comforts you because now you know in this season that you got something that's going to protect you. You know for sure that in this season you got something that's going to keep you up, that's going to keep you in position where now in spite of what the enemy is saying, in spite of what the enemy is doing, you know in this season that the enemy can't stand the chance because you operating out of faith. And you got the word of God. Oh, my God. You now know that you can speak some things into existence. And you believe that no matter how it may look, the enemy won't stand a chance. Oh, come on. Come through, Ronnie Bell. When you got faith in the word of God, in spite of how it may look, the enemy won't stand a chance in this season. And you got to know in your mind that this is what you have to understand when you living in the overflow. When you're living in the overflow, that that when you're living in the overflow and you're operating in the overflow, that you're operating out of the word of God, and the word of God becomes now your rod and your staff. It becomes now your rod and staff. And you can walk through the valley. Oh my God. I thank God that I can move maneuver through the valley. I thank God that I can maneuver through a pandemic through the coronavirus, in spite of what's going on, I know for sure that God is holding me up. I know for sure that I got something in my hand. And because I got it in my hand, God said in this season, just swing what you got in your hand. I need somebody to type in, swing what you got in your hand. Listen to me. In spite of what's going on, I got something in my hand. I stopped by to tell somebody on tonight, get something in your hand. Get a rod. Get a staff in your hand. Get something. Get the word of God in your hand. Get some faith in your hand. Because in spite of what's going on, you know you got something that you could swing at. You know for sure that that's something you could swing in spite of how it may, how it may look. Living in the overflow, it's that the rod and the staff, it comforts me in the midst of in the midst of trials. It comforts me in the midst of situation. When I'm living in the overflow, I'm not saying I'm not going to go through something. I'm not saying you're not going to deal with some stuff in the valley. But in the, when you're missing, you going into the valley. Oh, my God. Glory. You have to understand, even going through the valley, you shall not fear anything because whatever God, when you got your rod and your staff in this season, that's faith in the word. When you got your rod and staff, that's faith in the word. It's got to comfort you. You ain't got to be scared in this season. You don't have to be scared in the midst of this situation. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to fear not. You fear not whatever the situation is. You ain't got to be scared in the situation. You have to know in this season, living in the overflow, living in the overflow, understand something. God would tell you to sit at a table. Mm. This is the part right here where you need to shout at. When you're living in the overflow, when you're living in the overflow, and it's called favor, when you're living in the overflow, God would tell you to sit at a table. And the moment he tell you to sit at a table, God will start preparing. He'll start preparing that table, listen to me, in front of every hater that told you you, you would never make it. When you're living in the overflow, God will make you sit down at a table in front of those that told you you would never find your way. You, you should never made it. Your marriage would never be what it's, what it's supposed to be. And whenever you live it in the overflow of God, God will have you sit down at that table and he'll start preparing everything that you need and understand something. You have to understand. It's called you'll be, you are anointed with favor and can't no devil in hell stop what God is doing. When you are anointed with favor. Oh my God. Listen to me. When you're anointed with favor, God said, I'm going to let you sit at a table. I'm going to let you walk on the job. And they said that you're not supposed to have that job. God said, I'm going to let you walk on the job, and you're going to sit at that table, and I'm going to prepare the table right in front of your enemy. In spite of what they may be saying, they said that you may not be degreed enough. They said that you may not have a... Have, be in a position to get it. You're not, you're not in a place where you should afford to get it. But I'm going to give you the option to find yourself in a, at this table. And all you have to do is just sit at the table. Oh, my God. I thank 
God for his favor because he allowed me to sit at the table when folks said that you're not supposed to do it, when folks said that you're not supposed to be in the place of doing it. I thank God for allowing me to be at the table, and he started preparing the table for me. He made sure that I had everything that I need. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I need you to type in. I just, at least let's give God a two-second praise because in spite of what's going on, in spite of how it may look, some of you guys are still in place. Some of you are still in position. I thank God for being at the table. Can we just give God a two-second praise? Oh, my God. I thank God for allowing me to be at the table. I thank God for preparing the table for me in spite of what's going on, in spite of how it may look, in spite of how things, what the enemy might have said. I shouldn't be at the table. But I thank God for, for the table. I praise God for the table. Oh my God. Because when they told you you're not supposed to be at the table, God made sure that at the table that you had enough. Mm. Because he now said, I got you living in the overflow. He, he made the table in front of those that said that you never should have done it. That you never should have came, came out of the hood. That you never should have found yourself in a place where, where now... Who, could, could anything good come out of the hood? And that's what God is saying in this season. I'm going to let you sit at the table. Come through Ronnie Bell. I'm going to let you sit at this table in spite of how it may look, in spite of how it may seem. Living in the overflow. Oh, my God. I'm excited about this already. You have to understand, whenever you live it in the overflow, my God, you have to realize whenever you start to live in the overflow, living in the overflow is going to require, understand something, it's going to, a spill is going to take place. You're going to find yourself in a place when you're living in the overflow that spills is going to take place. In spite of how it may look, you're going to find some stuff running over in your life. And this is the part where I want you to understand is this. You have not, we have to do away with the selfish mentality. Because I'm glad that whenever God starts to pour off into me, that I have enough spill to take over in my life that it spilled over into somebody else's life. The biggest problem with a lot of us that we are so in a place where now that we don't we don't want to we don't want our stuff to spill over you know you know you're trying to keep every drop but god said in this season if you ever gonna find yourself at a, to be anointed you got to understand it is this i can't let your cup run over i can't fill your cup and your cup starts to overflow and you still trying to hold on to the little drop that's more where it came from there's more where it came from. And God said, you got to release the overflow. You got to understand something. Overflow, overflow. Your cup, he simply says this. Your cup, your cup, your cup overflow. You don't have to worry about if it's not enough. Mm. Listen to me. You don't have to worry if whenever your cup starts to overflow, you don't have to worry if it's enough. You don't have to worry if you have enough that it's not enough. You don't have to worry if it's not enough because you have to understand God said it's enough in this season. No matter how it may look, no matter how the job may, may be telling you, you may not have enough, but God said it's enough in this season. When you living in the overflow, God, it's going to be enough. It's going to be enough in this season. You have to understand this. And that's why you can't have a selfish mentality. Having a selfish mentality mentality stops you, stops your blessing, stops your blessing from overflowing. Because every time you find yourself in a place where you got to hold back what God is doing, or you got to hold back God's stuff, that hold back what God is pouring off into your life, you're not dropping enough. You're not increasing or you're not emptying out your cup for more. I just asked God in this season, fill me up. Oh, my God. God, fill me up in this season. I want more in this season. Overflow in this season. Oh, my God. God said, I got enough for you in this season. But you got to make your mind up that in this season, no matter how it may be, I'm not going to be selfish with it. 
I'm going to let it flow over. And those that's coming behind me, I declare that it shall come. And when they come behind me, it's going to overflow into their cup. And it's going to be enough to flow all the way in. Somebody say overflow. Overflow in this season. Overflow in the house. Overflow in the midst of a pandemic. Overflow is going to take place in your life. Living in the overflow. Understand something. Living in the overflow. Here's the thing. The moment you find yourself living in the overflow, you don't you have to realize that there's going to be some goodness. There's going to be some love. There's going to be some love. And, and, and everything that you've been praying about is going to follow you. If you're living in the overflow, peace is going to walk right behind you. Living in the overflow, declare, you have to understand, when you're living in the overflow, everything that you've been seeking for, everything that you've been asking God for, it now begins to follow you. Everything that you, you've been searching for, everything that you've been asking God to do in your life, it now follows you. You have to understand something. Goodness and mercy follows you because you're in the overflow. Realize this. Chaos, chaos is at your table. Chaos becomes at your table because you allow chaos to be at your table. You can't allow chaos to be at your table. You can't allow chaos to be at the table. Chaos don't belong at the table. Understand something, chaos don't belong at the table. It's only goodness and mercy. And I stopped by to let you know on tonight that you have to realize in this season, oh my God, come through Ronnie Bell. You have to realize in this season, this is the season in spite of the pandemic, God said, I'm finna, I'm sending an overflow. You, I'm sitting, you're gonna have to live in overflow. You have to, no matter what they tell us in, oh, well, no matter what they're saying on the news, no matter how, how things may be looking, and some people may be, some people are catching corona, God said in this season that you're gonna be living in the overflow. But you gotta know and have faith that in this season, you gotta trust the word that this season, that you living in the overflow. Living in the overflow is gonna dwell in your house. It should dwell in your house because you're dwelling in God's house. Living in the overflow should dwell in your house. Listen to me, because you're dwelling in God's house. Your house is covered. And I spot, stop by to let you know on tonight that if you trust and believe that in this season, that your house is covered. Oh my God. I thank God for that my house is covered. I thank God that I'm shifted into a place where my house is covered. Oh my God. And so I stopped by on tonight just to let you know that you got to know in this season that you need to live in the overflow. In spite of what's going on, this is a season of living in the overflow. And God is going to shift everything back into your favor. In spite of the pandemic, in spite of what's going on, in spite of how it may look, but when you're living in the overflow. Oh my God. So I thank you. I thank you again. So let me let me pray with you guys on tonight because I want to make sure that in this season, that as we go through, that as we go through this fourth quarter, that God is saying that this is the season where we're going to operate in the overflow and we're going to shift this fourth quarter all the way out. And this is the season in the midst of the pandemic that you're going to survive all the way through 2020. And when you get into 20, 2021, there's going to be a shout that takes place. And I thank God for you in this season. So I stop by and just, I want to just pray with you all tonight. Father God, we come right now. We say thank you. We lift you up. We magnify your name on tonight, God. We bless your name on tonight, God. We pray right now, Father God, that you would just begin to shift the atmosphere right now, Father God. We're living in the overflow, Father God. We know for sure, God, that you are that you are leading us in this in this season, God. We know for sure in this season, God, that you are holding us, Father God, in the midst of what's going on right now, God. You have our, you have our back, Father God, in the midst of the situation right now, Father God. We pray right now, Father God, that you would just begin to just move in the house. God, shift the atmosphere right now, Father God. There is no lack right now, God. And I'm declaring right now, in spite of how it may look, Father God, 
whatever the enemy is saying, God, there's an overflow that's going to take over their life, take over someone's life. And they're saying right now, Father God, what must I do to be saved in this situation? They're saying right now, Father God, in spite of how I may look, God, I'm declaring right now, Father God, in the midst of a pandemic, God, there is no lack, Father God, but you are declaring there's an overflow that's taking over the house right now, Father God. In the midst of it right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now, Right now, Father God, shift it right now, Father God, move right now, Father God, move in it right now, God, no matter how it may look, Father God, that everything that the enemy is saying that he's declared, I declare right now, Father God, that you can just begin to move in it right now, God. Shift in it right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. And we give you praise and we give you glory, God. We magnify your name on tonight and we worship you in the midst of everything that's going on. We worship you in the midst of trials right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Amen, amen. I declare right now, Father God, amen, hallelujah in the house, my God, I declare right now, Father God, that you are worthy and you're worthy to be praised right now, Father God, I declare that you will just move and shift right now, Father God, it's an overflow that's taking over right now, God, no matter how, move into a new season, and I'm declaring right now, Father God, that you are you're about to guide us into a whole nother in the name of Jesus, Father God, I declare, God, move with us right now, Father God, guide us right now, Father God, be a way maker right now, Father God, be a miracle worker right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, move on us right now, Father God, whatever it is that, that we are we're lacking, God, overflow into it right now, Father God, we overflow peace into the house right now, Father God. Overflow peace right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Amen. Amen. So, again, I thank you guys once again for tuning in with us. I thank you for tuning in with us on tonight. I, I thank you for, for staying with us on tonight. And like always, at the PLC Nation, I, I want to make sure that we are connected with you guys. I want to make sure that you guys are, are always connected with and if there's anybody that's in the house or that's online, I'm saying in the house, that's online, that's watching on tonight. If there's anybody that's watching us on tonight, I want to make sure that you are covered. If, if there's something that you're in need of, or, 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 or in need of, or whatnot, you need a prayer, or just hit us online. We're always online. Make sure that you hit us online. Go If, if not only hit us online at, at Ronnie D. Bell, but you can also go to Preston Old Church dot com pressing on church on um on facebook pressing on church on church on facebook pressing on church on instagram pressing on church and then also you can go to pressing on church dot com let me make sure that that we are in in the system you can go to these if you can go there and you can also make sure that check us out on there and also on youtube pressing on church dot personal church on youtube so if you can make sure that you are tuning in with us stay connected with us make sure that you stay connected with us because this is that season where god is doing some greatness in our life and in our ministry this is that season where god is doing some greatness in our life and in our ministry so i want to thank you guys again for tuning in with us we are we are operating as a new ministry and because it does seem like everything is now is starting to be in a position where we, we're now trying to figure some stuff out, figure some things out. And so make sure that you're connected with us. We are not only that, if you can, do me a favor, go to, um, I'm sorry, go to, I only got a horse. Make sure that you go to text the gear 844 916 2981. Text the gear 844 if you if you desire to give or you can go to cash app pressing on church dot pressing on church one or you could go to pressing on church dot com if you have that desire to give if you have the desire to give so <clears throat> make sure that you're tuning in please be sure to tune in with us every saturday every saturday at 7 p.m every saturday
10 to 7 p.m. For the time being, we are going to be shifting into something new. I'm going to be shifting into something new. And what I'm shifting into something new, this simply means we're going to be shifting into something new. And this simply means that we're going to be shifting into something new. And that means that maybe Should have tuned in with us on, on Saturday for the time being, and we may be shifting into something new. Thank you guys again. Uh, thank you guys again for tuning in to PLC Nation, and we'll be back.